this past weekend in Bergheim and in, or in Berlin specifically, there was an interesting kind of like clash, an interesting thing happening out there in club land, um, especially the clubs that I'm kind of interested in or care about. Um, particularly, there were two competing nights happening. There was a regular Ber Berlin a Berghain club night happening and there was obviously a really cool night over there in RSO, formerly Grease Müller, where you had someone called Freddie K, legendary DJ, um, playing. And it was the first kind of, you know, weekend where a lot of Berghain regulars' loyalties were split and they were kind of, you know, thinking, oh, should I actually go to a place that isn't Berghain for one weekend? Should I actually change my priorities and decide to go to RSO and have a bit of a different time? And I personally think, judging from the outside looking in, it's actually a refreshing change to see that there are there's a bit of competition in that city because I feel like as much as I love Bergheim, similar to my issues with Fold, I feel like there's there needs to be adequate competition to keep everybody on their toes. The fact that Bergheim is just so much better than the other clubs, I feel like sometimes they can get a bit complacent. They can kind of put their feet up and shit and kind of go through the motions. But if RSO is as good as people are saying it is and it isn't a viable alternative, I think in general it will be a good thing overall for people like myself who go and visit, you know, every other month or whatever. And mostly for the people that actually live there, they're going to have actual real competition and real good stuff to kind of check out. So the two raves that were happening there this past weekend, obviously you got the regular club night on the 15th that featured people like Boris, Philip Apasho, Quelza, Rika Zalan, Vincent Newman, and obviously in Panama Bar, you had people like Alinica playing, Ian Curtis, Monty Luke, Soundstream, all these legends, and Virginia. And then in RSO, you had this particular party happening um, where you had Ignes playing, um, Inox Trax, Rod Had, Vril, um, Adriana Lopez, Freddie K, who was a big one, Yamanas Yanamaste, 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 Phil Berg, um, DJ Fucky, uh, back to back with Creda, Dr. Jeep, back to back with Jensen Intercopter, who's one of my favorites. But obviously, the one that everybody wanted to go check out was Freddie K. Um, I'm not really too sure what the deal is with Freddie K. I'm not too sure if he's been removed from Berghain's listings because he used to do a lot of like closing sets back in the day where he was kind of famous for doing these monster closing sets from like Sunday all the way until Monday. Then I think because of COVID, Berghain's closing times changed. So maybe he had to change. I don't know what exactly happened, but I'm sure somebody would know um, what the actual deal is. But Freddie K seems to be doing a lot more raves and a lot more sets at RSO now and other venues as opposed to playing at Berghain for the most part. So if you're a Freddie K fanboy or a Freddie K fan, you're now following him and going to other locations. So it's kind of split loyalty. So because Berghain lineup wasn't the most star studded, but still had a lot of good people there, like someone like Quasar, Philip Apache, and Vincent Newman, always going to bring people out, people were actually split as in where to go and i think it's a good thing but i'm also being curious to see a lot of people say that rso isn't really that great and it's a sad thing to hear because rso if you're not aware is the re reincarnated version of grease Müller, which is a legendary berlin venue which unfortunately had to close so they relaunched it under the title of rso it's in a completely different location it's a little bit i want to say it's a little bit far but it's a little bit out of the way kind of most of the clubs are I don't know how to describe the area, but most of my kind of like central and northern kind of area, whereas RSO is a little bit more southeasterly kind of area down sort of kind of thing, a little bit closer to the airport. So people don't really go out to that sort of area. So that's probably why a lot of people are probably not fans of it. But I am liking the fact that they have a different approach, it seems like, to the booking. And they seem to have a different approach when it comes to the entries. Um, it seems like they're trying to focus more on a younger crowd, they're trying to mix up the bookings and have it be a little bit more different to what Bergheim do. So you have like a need to go there because it feels like a bit of a destination and maybe they have to get convince people to kind of go there in general. But I like that kind of approach. But unfortunately, because it's mostly focused towards a younger crowd, you also get a bit of dodgy people. A little bit of dodgy people. You, you get sometimes dodgy nights. So from what I've been able to hear and kind of read between the lines, it's a real flick of the coin as to whether or not you're going to have a good time or not. Because sometimes, you know, for the most part, as most of you will know, you know, the crowds really do dictate how good of a night you're going to have. Unfortunately, in a lot of club spaces, they do dictate. And even if you have good, great DJs and a great club, if the crowd is off, you're never going to really have the greatest of times. And because they may be prioritizing having more of a younger crowd and letting those kids in more, the crowd is a little bit more amped up. 
maybe a little bit more druggy, maybe a little bit more loud, maybe a little bit more like you know um, misbehaving if that is a, if that is even possible in a nightclub, and that's maybe putting people off. But I think my personal opinion is that I like it even if it's wrong, because what thing I don't like and that's something I've kind of done myself is the constant comparisons people are having with RSO and Bergheim. I think two clubs can coexist. And I feel like they should coexist by doing two completely different things. And I think comparing one of the greatest clubs in the world to a club that's just started is also unfair. And I think we should just stop that comparison flat out. No more comparisons. Just let one place exist as it is and let the other place exist as it is and let people decide what they want to do. But I was curious to see, actually, via the Google reviews, what people actually think of it. Because I actually haven't been to RSO yet. I've been to Berlin a, or Berlin a number of times over the last few years and shit, but I haven't actually been to RSO because I've just been lazy to go and kind of traverse over there and I've kind of been stuck going to Bergheim, going to fucking, um, what's it fucking called? Um, Els, going to Trezor, going to Same Heads, Paloma Bar, like all these places I've kind of been more focused on going there than going to other places. So it's kind of making it hard. But let's actually see some of the reviews here of what people have actually said about their times that they spent over their RSO. So this first person says, um, this is uh, from a month ago and they gave it five stars. We had an amazing night there. The club is a beautiful location inside an abandoned brewery. Inside it's two stages separated by long corridors and outside place. I think the outside can be improved, for example, with a bonfire spot. Another, oh, the bonfire spot I think they're mentioning is because that's what they used to have at Chris Miller. They used to have this really big bonfire spot thing. I think they had one even in the middle of these chairs that were kind of like in a circular shape. That was pretty cool to kind of, you know, trip out and smoke some weed and enjoy yourself out there when you're clubbing. Another one says, another positive thing is often I noticed the awareness team around checking that everything was going smooth. In our case, we queued for 40 minutes and didn't have any problems at the entrance. Good to hear. Another person says here, one of the best clubs in Berlin, not too strict door selection, possibly um, to buy tickets in advance for your ear RA, good crowd and great sound system, toilets get, get crowded, but great club. On the topic of the tickets in advance, I've kind of changed my mind on it. I remember ages ago saying, one of the things that's kind of sad when you go to Bergheim, especially when you get in, you feel really bad for people that don't get in, especially the ones that queue up for hours. Because I feel like in the past, I remember, and I don't know if this is me being too drunk or too high and misremembering, but I swear I remember back in the day before the pandemic, when you queue at Bergheim, if the queue was like an hour long or something, the bouncers would come down the queue, at least until the barriers, and tell people in the queue, hey, you're not going to get in. You know what I mean? And just let you know if you want to stay stay but we're not gonna let you in so at least then you could just leave as opposed to queue up for two hours get to a door and then be told not tonight so i feel like buying the tickets in advance for a club that's got a door picking selection is a bit of a trap because you're gonna buy a ticket you, you're, you're ready to go you queue up you get to the door and they say no because i don't know they don't like your vibe or something you're gonna feel super pissed off because you fucking bought a ticket and you, in your head, you think the ticket guarantees entry. But obviously in Berlin, everything's upside down. It's a bit different that way. They kind of, you know, they don't really care if you have money. They kind of care about your vibe and, you know, maintaining the sanctity of the club. It's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit snobby, a little bit pretentious and shit. But it works, unfortunately. Especially once you go in, you realize, oh shit, all of that fucking care and attention into picking who goes in actually does equal a better environment. And sometimes just having people jump through hoops, make sure that they're on the best behavior when they get inside. So I feel like the whole ticket buying thing in advance, I feel like they should stop doing that and just let people just queue up. And then if you can get in, you can get in, then you pay. But giving someone an option to pay for a ticket and then they, and then they queue 40 minutes, even if it's 10 minutes, if I bought a ticket, I have to get inside. If you deny me, I'm going to throw a fit. You know what I mean? Um, it continues. Good crowd, sound system and toilets get very crowded, but very good club. Nice mix of tourists and regulars, which I think is a good, which I think is a good omen for them in general. Um, let's look at a one star review. One star review. This person says as follows. I really loved this club before, but after today's incident, I will never come back here again. The bouncer simply does not respect the public and makes people wait in the cold, deliberately letting people through very slowly, creating an appearance of a large queue. In a two-hour queue, he let just maybe two people through from a line of people who had not bought tickets in advance. But all the club is empty because it was only the start of the party. All the guests turned around after standing in the cold for hours and left. Never returned. i never seen this before. Even when the club is overcrowded, people are at least let in and then the faster speed then it's in a club so by 
what I can deduce from this, this person was just pissed off by by being made to stand outside. I'm not gonna lie. I think that city is unique. I don't think I've noticed that in any other city in the world where it's almost like they they make you stay outside a little bit longer. And I think it's maybe a little bit of a mind trick thing to kind of make you like super excited and nervous and on your best behavior and sober you're up, whatever it may be. But they do do that quite often. And with a club like RSO, because it's newish, because they've, you know, they're kind of getting their footing, maybe some nights are kind of empty. Maybe they're doing good cue control. Who knows? But this is definitely on purpose, by the way. It's 100% on purpose. But I also think it's also people's expectations. Like if you're used to just going to like a regular cocktail bar and just walking in, if someone makes you wait two minutes, it's going to feel like an hour. You know what I mean? Because you're just used to just walking into a club or walking into a bar. So going somewhere where they make you wait in a snake of a barrier queue, where they make you fucking answer questions as to why you're there and you almost have to fucking apply to get into a thing, it can be a little bit disconcerting. But I think this is probably uh, something that happens in most clubs in Berlin, unfortunately. Another person says here, yeah, RSO, aka survival mode. Highly recommend to wear two socks and high boots and a jacket that covers everything, even your eyes, if you're queuing in the winter. Not for the week. We lost some men that day. Queued for four hours. Left my own dignity in the end. Yeah, I've done that before myself too. I think embarrassingly so, embarrassingly so, one particular Berghain night, I queued up in the queue for like six hours, I'm going to say, about six hours. Embarrassingly so. And I think that might have been like, just after the pandemic ended, I went to like one of those, you know, clubs or Vesta things. And I'm thinking I've been sick. Maybe it was, maybe it was five. Maybe it was exactly five hours. That was very embarrassing. But that was also not my fault because I got there just when the club was full and the queue wasn't that long. I was literally by the end of the barriers. So I could technically see the door. And that's the worst place to be. When you can see where you're about to go, it's worse because you don't want to leave because you're like, I'm just there. But you're not really just there. You're like, you know, there's still many people in front of you. And of course, people have to queue jump in the queue as well. So <sighs> I'm embarrassed by that. I really am ashamed. I don't talk about that too much, but I did eventually get in. But I remember getting in thinking to myself, like, what am I doing, bro? Like, I remember there was a time back in the day when the whole food truck thing was big. We, me and my friend, were, we used to queue for burgers and we thought we were losers then. We'd go to all these different parts of London to go find the best burgers. There'd be people cooking them in fucking food trucks and shit. And you have to queue sometimes for an hour. For your, for your fucking smash burger and shit. And we thought we were losers then. But at least it's a fucking burger, right? Like a good cheeseburger, a good smash burger with good fucking meat, with high quality cheese, American cheese, whatever, melting in there with some great bread toasted. You know, that, that shit is probably worth queuing for an hour. But a nightclub? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Six hours. I'm so embarrassed. Another person says here, one of the best clubs in Berlin, front door people are always super nice and inside it's super safe for women. I appreciate a lot. The music is always good. Another one says here, our friend tried to put us on the list, but we still were turned away at the door. There's a first for everything, I guess, but a little extra to be invited to a party by an artist and then not to be invited by the key venue. <laughs> no queue. And our friend said that they to end someone else's set early because there were so few people there. Next level bad man as apparently this weekend was super quiet anyway. So I love this. I love these reviews because it's almost like they're trying to diss the club by saying, oh, your club is shit and it's quiet. But you still wanting to go to the shit quiet club. But I love the fact that Berlin clubs can get away with this. No other place in the world. That's why I think we should stop comparing Berlin. And especially I used to myself. I'm kind of speaking to myself here. Stop comparing Berlin to any other city or any other place in the world. No other place in the world can get away with treating their quote unquote customers this way. Where like, you know, like this per if this person said, what if this person, what they said was true. A friend of theirs was playing at that club, was a DJ. They put them on the guest list which is a free list, which is, should be a kind of VIP, how you jump the queue thing. And they still won't let in. And then their friend also had to end their set early because the club was empty. Imagine how that must make you feel. Your friend who's an artist puts you on a list, you can't get in because the club says, nah, you're not cool enough. Nah. It's like only Berlin could get away with having a guest list that still required you to like, you know, put on your best like happy face when you get to the front of the queue. It's tough, but I do like the whole like, you know, oh, your club is empty anyway. It's almost like, you know, when guys get rejected by girls and they're like, oh, you're ugly anyway. Who would want you? Uh, do you know what I mean? Look, you're super fat. It's like, bro, you came up to me because I said, no, and I am, now I'm ugly. Similar to this sort of thing. So I kind of like this. I'm not going to lie. I like how random and how up and down everyone's experiences. I think 
somewhere in the middle is where it kind of falls. It kind of reminds me of like, you know, when you see like one star restaurant, one star reviews for Chinese restaurants and shit, usually, oh my God, the service was horrible. It means usually the, the restaurant's fucking banging. Um, last, uh, let me just want read a couple latest ones and I'm going to move on to an actual Reddit review that broke it down really well. Um, this person says, just a day ago, this place is the most racist, xenophobic place I've ever seen. The guy at the door is on his high horse, gives you ridiculous questions in order to deny entry into the place for no reason. <laughs> no, that is a reason though, right? If they ask you questions, like, it's a little bit obnoxious and it's a little bit self-absorbed. It's a little bit annoying when they ask you questions anywhere about who's playing. It's almost like, you know, when you apply for a job and they ask you to send examples of your work or to do like a, a quiz or to do like some brief or something. It's like, bro, I'm not working for free. I applied here because I need money. I don't fucking, I'm not trying to audition for your fucking startup. Like, go fuck yourself, right? So it's probably the same sort of feeling when you go to a club and someone says, oh, who are you here to see? It's like a DJ, obviously. Like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> well what are you here to do take drugs and drink and you know and, and try and fucking swap spit with somebody like what else am i going to be doing here so it can be quite annoying but i think unfortunately for these people unfortunately you don't know until you get in that all that stuff is actually beneficial because once you get in the vibes are usually immaculate like in all my times being in berlin i've never once seen people fight on a dance floor and this is me going to all the shitty clubs too you know the fucking sissy fosses and shit all these places i've never once seen a fight on the dance floor ever in my life and you know i can't the amount of times i see people scrap in 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 london even in weatherspoon you know it's over fucking three digits so all of that pretentious shit that they do all those jumping of the hoops it does actually benefit the dance floor unfortunately so this person says the guy the door is on his high horse look at his question to deny entry when um where we had even purchased tickets ahead of time online and he cancelled them when we got to the front of the line i have had i've i have traveled all over the world have never been treated like this unless you are a local berliner they will treat you terribly tourists stay away categorically stay away so i want to just check some actual pictures of the spot because i've actually seen what it actually looks like in a long time but you know allegedly it's a nice little spot to kind of check out um the building looks pretty cool i'm not gonna lie former it looks like it looks like a church isn't it almost 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 has like churchy vibes about it but i quite i quite like it i quite like it and it's got a really nice outdoor area too i think where they do like street food and street markets and shit um there are people performing on the outdoors as well but it's a it's a quite a cool little spot it's a it's a great it's a great sort of like substitute for grease Mueller, which was kind of a similar sort of vibe very industrial but that's the original grease Mueller. that's the grease Mueller that i remember this long dance floor with a dj booth at the end with these um with these panels with the colors and the light will be coming through early in the morning and you'll be tripping your fucking balls off listening to someone playing some minimal shit in the background like oh good fucking times i missed that venue let's actually read the reddit review because i think the reddit review is bad actually quite good this person put through so this is a rso as a burger and alternative somebody posted it the other day so said the following i want to share my impressions of an rso visit and have them challenged with other people's thoughts it was my first visit for a club nuts equivalent which is the Bergheim thing i've been several times before but only for parties like gigan i was in there only from sunday from 4 p.m until 3 a.m the next morning first of all i think the competition with Bergheim is great everyone runs faster when you feel someone's breath is on your neck i get the feeling though that rso doesn't intend to be a one-for-one -one copy but rather find its own audience i've never been to greece media so i don't know the history fully but since this party provided a killer lineup even for Bergheim said the comparison should be fair here yep agree with that one the venue i really like the setup of the place i think it worked out great yesterday lots of options to chill inside and outside without stairs are nice getting to the robust um, building after being out in the sun always completely blinds me though and constantly running to people and the swing sorry i'm just puzzled why some summer wasn't open on sunday i know i know plus points for accepting credit cards at the bar so i agree with that one i love the food container was open but the hot dog was sadder than anything um person going to a nightclub and complaining about the hot dogs is like me when i used to complain about the air conditioning it's like what it continues robot sound system was great freddie started um super early piercing loud though 
it was hot on the dance floor but not Bergheim in the summer hot and seemed like to have a good ventilation in general what's up with the fucked up dance floor though there's a height differential potholes and in general stuff that fucks up your body while dancing on it the 18 year olds might survive but my old bows definitely don't yeah this is something that only people in other countries get the pleasure of air conditioning air conditioning doesn't exist here in retail stores let alone nightclubs so when you do go clubbing make sure you bring a vest or take off your top because most places are fucking sweat boxes um it continues queue management was atrocious as always um it's not busy at all when i arrived but still took 30 minutes to get in as a ticket holder toilet lines are chaotic but rather quick that's a plus so this seems to be like a constant thing with greece oh sorry with rso the queue management and i wonder what it, why it is it must be because of these fucking barriers maybe because they're purposely doing that thing that clubs do where they make you stand outside so that it can make the club look like it's more busy than what it is and people are walking by they might want to go in that might be the reason but i'm curious to know why they are not l just letting people in because you know the the annoying thing about this club as you can see from these pictures of people there the door is right by the side of the street so it's not like you have to like there's not much distance bergan's a bit different right the door's right here the door's right there where you have to go in so they make you queue this long snake queue like you're in a fun fair or something but the door is right there so it's, that must be highly 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 annoying um and then you've got another picture here of the side of the door as well so this must be one of the things that frustrates people like you're going there you're trying to fucking have a good time and the door is right there but they're making you snake around it kind of i think the same thing happens in disneyland they will make you like they make you sit wait in this fucking snake queue the door is right there and then it doesn't really go that far so maybe it's a mental gymnastic thing maybe they actually are busy maybe they're trying to abide by the fucking fire code thing and they don't want to let too many people in and get fucking fined who knows but that seems to be a constant complaint for people online here that they're just not letting people in fast enough which is you know annoying to say the least i could only imagine i could only imagine so going back to the review itself on here um this is in my view the two big fails of rso its operations are lackluster if i'm not amateur level and whoever designed the entrance should be sent off to a remote island from selection to the back check to the wardrobe it's just an insufficient mess the biggest joke is that the back check didn't even check anything they slapped my full bag and asked what's in it clothes and i was sent in and compared to my first ever rso visit where i was searched 10 minutes ahead of time head to toe and it was the only time where something was found on me i'm all for relaxed bag searches but didn't you learn from the perceptual pepper spray fiasco there's some middle ground here that's fair um to be fair i think bag searches in general doesn't matter how efficient they are they're always a bugbear i've been in fucking Bergheim before and i've been waiting 10 minutes to fucking get seen by people and if you've been Bergheim, you know that the bag check area is huge it's like a huge section there's tons of people servicing you and it still took fucking ages sometimes when the club's busy the club's busy and i think in other countries maybe it's different where you guys are but in london specifically people don't really like to leave their bags in cloakrooms um i think in berlin it's different P people actually put their cloaks their clothes in the cloakroom in london mostly people don't go with a jacket anyway right it's like up north you just go without a jacket just so you don't have to fucking put you put yourself in a cloakroom or waste money or bring cash but i think in that particular city people love to like wear clubbing outfits so they take like big coats and then they put the coat in the cloakroom and then go show off the clubbing outfit on the dance floor so that's why the, the cloakrooms are just always rammed sometimes you have to go early just to get your fucking shit in a cloakroom imagine that imagine how lame that is going to a party super early just so you can put your fucking coat in a cloakroom it almost feels like you're in primary school or something it continues um music um yana maste clar and freddy beautiful progression um, quality music too fast for my taste and feet so my stamina was suffered but no real objection and complaints here now open actually i'm curious to see because um freddie k is going to be playing in fold in july on the 20th i think and i'm going to be going there um i've not been the biggest fan of freddie k i've seen him a few times seen him play at fold seen him play on the same lineup with devious one and renee y saw him play at fucking um what's it called e1 
that fucking Zionist venue and he wasn't that great either. But everyone keeps saying he's the best DJ in the world. So I have to see him properly. So he's playing here in London and Fold, I think on the 20th of July. So that'll be a good time to see him. And I actually plan to go there. It's the first time ever I'll be doing a Fold. I'll be doing like an opening closing. So I'll be there from the actual start because I actually want to see what I want and see what the whole vibe is like and see if he can kind of convince me or, you know, change my mind, as they say. Because, you know, he wants to change my mind, I'd assume, because I'm so important. It continues um now open the open floor i knew it won't be panel um, garden second floor but jesus booty shaking breaking stuff i didn't expect i wasn't in the mood for it so i didn't even try to get into it but that was definitely an interesting choice i'd say i would prefer other music in that context selection now that was a borderline offensive i'm not too sure if it was just done to project that they also curate a crowd but given the results of it it seems to be just for show several diehard bergen friends Bergheim friend sorry with a ticket were rejected I also um, barely got into it barely got in after a bullshit interrogation have you ever been here before who's playing today etc I love how people from Bergheim almost feel like they're like a special class of people that they should get into all clubs as if anybody gives a fuck like <laughs> I love it man like the, <laughs> the fucking ego that people have just because they go places is absolutely insane it almost reminds me of like fashion people you know, because they buy certain brands, they feel like they're like, you know, it's like people that are into Prada. They almost feel like they're more intellectual or something. It's like, bro, like, Musha Prada doesn't know you. Raph Simmons doesn't know you. Nobody knows you. Like, just buy your thing and go home. Um, but I love this attitude. I love this. While Bergheim tries to curate a diverse set of guests, my feeling from yesterday was that the more heroin chic, techno hipster, the better. Um, there was less age diversity and solo queues were subject to extra scrutiny what i love in Bergheim is that i can always observe other people like me inside solo but popping up in different friend circles for a while didn't see much of that yesterday many clicky groups are stuck together and are all playing dress up i don't have a problem with this i know it's annoying but i don't have a problem with this it seems like they're actively not chasing but they're actively catering to our audience that's perfectly fine i think you need to have that there's not many because I don't think those these people will be happy to go to Watergate. Watergate is probably a little bit too commercial for them. Maybe Trezor is a bit too old. Maybe Bergheim is a little bit too snobby. So these people need places to go to. These kids who are on TikTok, who are like TikTok techno hipster fans, whatever they may be. I think it's perfectly fine to give them a space and, you know, RSO seems to be the place to go. Um, you know what to expect there. You know how it's going to be. It's probably going to be a bunch of people, you know, dressed up in like, you know, corny um, harnesses that they bought from fucking Amazon and shit and shitty PVC stuff. You know what it's going to look like. You just go there for the DJ, you go there for the rave and you kind of go home. But being overly judgy about it is a bit lame and, you know, it is what it is. Um, the vibe. Selection greatly direct. Sorry, selection directly influence the vibe i will double down on my first impressions from yesterday and revise that 70 percent tiktok 30 percent Berghain now it just felt like a random techno party anywhere i would maybe compare it to the friday party at Berghain's via vibe adjacent but different again i don't think that's a bad thing i i purposely hate it that all clubs especially some of them in london try to put you know copy the Berghain thing like do your own thing you know what i mean like come at it from your own angle have a different selection policy have a different programming thing that you do so you have to give people a reason to go not just try and copy some things from another place it doesn't make any sense so the fact that they're trying to go for more for a tiktok generation crowd makes more sense and they're also younger maybe they have more disposable income maybe they're just more open to like partying more regularly they're going to stay more often they're going they're not going to fucking write essays on reddit and shit that might be the reason why they do it Another one. People were young and ruthlessly stomping around the dance floor. I couldn't dance for 10 seconds without somebody crashing into me. Very egotistical crowd. Does your 10 people crew really need to walk all the way from the back to the DJ podium through the packed Freddy floor? To be fair, this happens a lot in Bergheim too. There's some fucking super aggy gay guys in there that roll through like they own the place, which they technically do because it's kind of their space. I get it. But there's some aggressive dick gay dudes in Bergheim too who that don't fuck around they don't play and you turn around you want to say something and you just see this fucking this 3d chest this 3d fucking you know guy that's built like a brick shit house you're like you know what i'm gonna let you just go through man <laughs> i'm good i'm gonna let you just go through <laughs> but you get a lot of guys crashing into you over there sometimes crashing into you because you know they want to stick their penis in you but sometimes crashing into you because they want to get to the dj roof and you let them go through you let them go through. Despite that, I still don't see interesting chats with people. Many funny quips with the many Bergheim Sunday regulars roaming around. I guess it's something you only experience when you go to a place regularly. But on on God, like I would never even 
I'm so in my own zone. I would never, n- number one, notice somebody, let alone notice somebody that goes to a particular club. That must be, you must be really going out a lot if you start to notice, oh, this is a Bergan regular. This person's an RSO regular. That person goes to this, like, what? Like, well, anyway, overall sentiment. So I'll probably not choose an RSO weekend over, over a Bergheim one. For Oscar next month, I'll just go to see him and then go back to Bergheim. There's just something missing, the familiar coming home feeling. My guess is the mood ball for their positioning is we want to attract stereotypical, younger, clicky fashion techno crowd and provide them with a space um, where they can go as a group. I think that makes sense to choose a slightly different angle. So I guess they, in conclusion, agreed with me that maybe them choosing to go for a younger crowd is a good thing. That younger crowd is also younger. You'd assume they're going to grow with RSO the same way I kind of grew with Berghain over the years and other people did also. And in general, it's going to be a good thing for the city because you're going to have a different place to go, a different type of vibe. If you're looking maybe for that type of sound, that type of, you know, stompy techno kind of vibe, you can know where to go. If you're looking for what you'd expect from a Bergheim place, you go so over there. Those options are good because we don't have them in London. We don't have those type of options. Everything, we, every place you go to is kind of the same and the only real standout place is Fold. And I feel like, in my personal opinion, you know, I don't like to go to the same place all the fucking time, no matter how good it is. So I would like more competition, but we don't have any. So the fact that these guys have two of these type of clubs that are open from like, you know, Saturday to Monday, the fact that they take them for granted is just, ugh, it's infuriating because we don't have, we don't even have one that's open from Saturday to Monday and they have two, maybe even more. Um, so yeah, so big up those guys, big up the person that added um, the review as well. Very, very, very good one here. A couple more points here, quick and I'll move on. It says, you summed up very well, RSO is not there just to be a real term to a competition. The crowd needs to grow up. The safety issues around the dance floor are borderline criminal. The area around the dark room stairs is a disaster. Another person says here, yeah, I think we need to stop comparing oranges and apples. I agree. Um, like not every club is trying to reproduce Bergheim or be a Bergheim alternative. Some focus on resident DJs, other promoters and parties, um, with different crowds. I don't think Grease Miller and RSO advertised themselves as a replacement. If anything, Grease Miller was a club you went to before graduated Bergheim. These spaces are needed um i don't think i even went there before i just went there because of an alternative i was pleasantly surprised by seeing a lot more top um half naked female bodies than i have done in a while happy to see women feel safer overall in the club again it's definitely something the scene has been lacking since covid also burger is overcrowded as devious one closing every weekend now yep yeah, so big up this person agree with a lot of points they've made there and i can't wait to check out rso eventually when i do eventually go back which will probably be next month so i'm actually eager to check out for myself and see where i'm going and probably i'll do a little review myself of what i feel like when i actually go there i might do a little review myself when i actually go there you never fucking know you never fucking know